Across the line for Nakagami. A 46 8 What a lap! What? Takaki Nakagami is a dangerous rider. Look, racing is racing, and at high speeds, nobody deliberately sets out to cause a crash. Rins was furious when he labeled Takaki a dangerous rider after what happened at a turn in Mugello. But was Rins right to make this accusation? Takaki is no stranger to the MotoGP world, and since his first race, he's had some fantastic performances, but not without some terrible performances too. But what is a terrific racing career without hiccups? The Japanese rider has achieved some of the greatest feats throughout his career, and as he looks towards the 2023 season, what more could be in store for him? Did you know he was the first Japanese rider to qualify for a pole in nearly 16 years? Not every day do you get labeled as a dangerous rider. So was Rins a little harsh in criticizing the guy? Or was there just a little bit more to it than meets the eye? We'll cover it in more detail as we go through the video. But first, let's take a look at Takaki Nakagami's career from the start to learn a little about what got him to where he is today. Takaki was already making headlines in 2006 after he claimed victory in all the season races at the GP125 Japanese Road Race Championship, making him the youngest champion in the series. After joining MotoGP, Red Bull in 2007, Takaki switched to Europe during the 125 GP CEV Championship, also making a wildcard championship debut at the 125cc 2007 finale at Valencia. The CEV season was a success. Finishing in sixth position, he rose to the world level with Team IC in 2008 and took another year mastering the way with a new motorcycle, tracks and teams. He switched to the ISPA on Getter team for 2009 and was able to develop his rookie season as he regularly finished with points, including his fifth place at Donington Park and Le Mans. To build on his career further, he decided to make a return to Japan after refusing 2010 offers for 125cc teams. He joined the ST600 Japanese Championship while riding a Honda HARC Pro. He won the Suzuka 8 hours on his first attempt, making him the first to ever won on a Honda, together with Takumi Takahashi and Ryuchi Kiyonari. He stayed with the team because the season was productive, and with a Honda HP6, he rose to class J GP2 and won 5 out of the 6 races in that season. Takaki was rising and got a place in Moto2 for 2012 with Team Italtrans. Compared to his days in the 125cc class, he found the new class easier to get used to and finished with points in 8 out of 17 races. For 2013, he stayed with Team Ital Trans and his Moto2 rookie experience got him a podium at the 2013 Qatar opener. The year would become his best ever Moto2 season, considering he claimed three pole positions in Le Mans, Bruno and Silverstone, and together with several second place podium finishes from Indianapolis and Misano, he concluded the year in eighth position in the standings. Switching to Team Idemitsu Honda in 2014 seemed like a good move for him to chase after the Moto2 title for the 2014 attack, especially after he completed the Qatar opener. However, a technical disqualification left Takaki struggling to get comfortable with a new bike and only managed to complete most races of the season in the lower points. For 2015, he stuck with the team, hit the reset button and things paid off as he progressively rose to the top of the Moto2 yet again after a podium standing in Misano and completing the season in 8th position overall. Takaki wanted to avoid the same mistakes that made him fall back down the order in 2013, during the 2016 season, as he became a contender for the title. A Moto2 victory at Assen, together with three more podiums, allowed him to stay as a front runner before he fell down to position 6 in the final standings. The same happened in 2017 with a victory at Silverstone and three podiums as he completed the season in 7th position overall. Conversely, the season ended on a high note for Takaki after getting a promotion to MotoGP for 2018 with LCR Honda. Having a highly experienced Cal Crutchlow as his teammate to learn from, Takaki made good progress in his MotoGP rookie campaign. Although, without much notable results at the beginning, he was finding his feet. His best finish was at the end of the 2018 season at the wild and wet Valencia finale, where he finished in 6th position. Takaki also returned to the Suzuka 8 hours to complete as runner-up, with PJ Jacobson and Takumi Takahashi. Takaki once again reaped from his rookie experience by making significant progress in his second 2019 MotoGP season, 
He was progressing well with top 10 finishes, but a shoulder injury at the Dutch GP changed things. He had to go for surgery, which shortened his season. But up onto that point, however, he more than doubled the points he scored in his first rookie season and finished in 13th place overall. He stuck with Honda for the 2020 season after an announcement on October 2019. After crashes in the opening round with injuries to Marc Marquez and Crutchlow, his teammates, he quickly rose to become Honda's top rider. He was continuously in the top 10 and scored all the points for Honda in the beginning eight rounds. He qualified for the pole position at the Terrell Grand Prix, the first pole position a Japanese had claimed in nearly 16 years. He completed the year in 10th position in the championship after claiming 116 points. His strong performances in the early 2020 season forged a tighter bond with Honda, and they announced that he would continue with the team until the end of 2022. He was marking his first MotoGP class multi-year contract that allowed him to get his hands on the 2021 factory spec bike. The machine's performance was weak though, and he suffered the consequences with most of Honda's riders just bordering inside the top 10, and on occasions outside the top 10. His best season result was when he was in 4th position in Jerez, and completed the season in 15th position overall after gaining 76 points, and coming in 6 points ahead of Alex Marquez, his teammate. For the 2022 season, and to better deal with the pressures he faced in the coming seasons, Takaki enlisted the assistance of a mental coach, something most riders opt for these days, and why not? He wants to be at the top of his game. As we promised, why did Rins call Takaki the most dangerous rider? Takaki and Rins were competing over 12th position at the Mugello race after a terrible qualifying had pushed Rins to 21st on the grid. While trying to overtake Takaki on turn 11 of lap 23, Rins crashed out. Rins was furious about the collision, and with the stewards' choice not to penalize Takaki, he stated that he did not understand what Takaki did and after watching the video, he could clearly see that Takaki was out of line. Rins had tried to overtake him in the same corner a lap before, but he'd held the position, so he tried to overtake him on the next lap by pushing the throttle just that little bit more to try and gain an advantage of being in front. When they were coming out of the corner, they were both side by side, but Rins collided with Takaki, knocking him off his bike. The stewards did say that Rins was ahead of Takaki marginally, and according to Rins, if any of the riders were asked about Takaki, then they would call him the most dangerous rider when overtaking on the track. Rins said he did not understand why he had to race that way. Both Rins and Takaki claimed they made no mistake, but what do you think? We believe Takaki Nakagami did nothing wrong, and Rins wanted to vent his anger because of the crash. Here are some interesting things about Takaki Nakagami. Number 1. He was born 40 kilometers from Tokyo in Chiba, and he chose to settle in 2018 in Catalonia. Number 2. He keeps a pet, a French bulldog aged 8, and his family keep her with them most of the time. When he video calls his parents, he often asks to see her, and she is always crazy every time he does that. Number 3. He was often accompanied to the races by his sister Momo before the pandemic. Number 4. In 2008, during his international debut, he rode with the number 73. During a return in 2012, he accepted the number 30 after Alberto Puig assigned it to him while he was in the MotoGP Academy. He would turn out to be a significant person in his career. Number 5. The circuit he loves most is Mategi, though he admits that he would love to see Suzuka return to the calendar. Number 6. He enjoys snowboarding, cycling, and tennis as a hobby. He also enjoys watching TV. Number 7. He enjoys cooking, and as much as he currently stays in Spain, he's still attached to Japanese gastronomy, particularly sushi. Number 8. He is slightly superstitious. He always puts on his right glove and boots first and gets on his motorcycle on the same side. Number 9. He had Mick Doohan and Daijiro Kato posters on his bedroom wall. He was inspired by the riders as much as Valentino Rossi is his idol. Number 10. His favorite TV show is La Casa de Papel, and Leonardo DiCaprio is one of his favorite actors, not forgetting Will Smith, whom he always wanted to invite to the Grand Prix. His personal life. Takaki has been in a couple of relationships before, but has never had children or been engaged. For the most part, he keeps his relationship on the down low. His fans can only hope to catch a glimpse of his dating life. Charity work. He has worked with CharityStars.com on several occasions where they work together to auction signed items from his race. All the profits always go to a specific charity. He's one of those racers willing to look out for others, which makes him happy. His net worth. Just how much is Takaki worth? 
With his salary and current endorsements, his net worth is about $1 to $5 million as of 2022, with a significant amount of his income coming from his motorcycle racing career. He has had several brand endorsements, but several sponsors have stayed with him for extended periods. He is currently endorsed by the Red Bull Drinks Company as one of their athletes. Arai, the helmet manufacturer, also backs him up. Takaki did apologize for the incident, though he admits he was not in the wrong. From what Rin had to say and what happened. Apart from this accident, do you think that Takaki is a dangerous rider? Let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to check out Moto Plus for more fantastic videos. See you there!